The idea of immortality is quite elusive, even in the world where we can clone robot people. But fidelity, what is fidelity? And why haven't we seen an episode named it yet? Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Episode 6 of Season 2 of Westworld, Phase Space. And boy, is there a twist. It's one of those things that you sit there and you say, you knew there was a twist coming, and you knew there was going to be something about this part of it, but then it just blew you away. Now, of course, there's all sorts of dark themes still, so we still need to worry about the fact that some people just can't watch this. And that makes sense, because we're dealing with some dark themes, like what is in the human heart, and what happens when you're let loose, what happens when you can do anything. Last week, we dealt with the idea of plagiarism and copying, and pulling stories from one genre to another. And as Martin said, sometimes it's just a set dressing, and it doesn't really matter. But, okay, for those of you that don't know what I do here, I take apart stories and put them back together again to find out how and why we tell them. I do reviews as shows come out, TV shows, books, movies, you name it. And then I also do theory videos twice a month. So far this month I've done one about character profiles. Starting next month, I'm going to alternate, one for how and one for why we tell stories. If any of that sounds interesting, or if you just want to hear me rattle on about TV shows, click the subscribe button, because we're taking a walk through Westworld, a walk that's going to teach us whether or not we found the elusive fidelity. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. And we have quite a few storylines running all at the same time. But they're really all intermixed, although I'm still not sure what order they happen in. The Shogun World stuff is pretty much done and over with now. Pretty much, at least I think so. I think that was just a way of getting Maeve to where she needs to be, and getting the people who are with Maeve to understand what she's capable of, and whether or not they agree with her. The irony being that while we talk about Terminator, in this case, the Terminators figured out what the lesson Terminator is trying to teach the humans are. There is no fate but what we make. Choices matter, and we have to allow those choices to play out in order to make them make sense and make them worth doing. So the same way that Maeve had to allow Musha, I don't know how to say his name, the bad guy samurai, Ronan, to fight, she also had to allow them to choose to stay behind. Of course, she doesn't have to. She's a telepath. She's fully in control of all sorts of crazy stuff. She could just make you change your mind. In fact, when she finally found her daughter, I really expected her to say, you will remember me as your mother. You know, Jedi mind tricker. But I guess that didn't come into her mind. Then again, the fact that it never occurred to her that she had to have someone else playing the role of her mother kind of creeps me out. Alright, but that storyline's the least of our concerns. Because, yeah, they're calling Delos for help. But at the same time, we get that very nice fact that there are some humans that understand and want to help the hosts. Meanwhile, we have the story that where we started. Well, sort of. We started with the man in the black hat. But we started with Bernard. Bernard talking. But, you know... For a second, you think it might not be Bernard, but it might have been the whole time. Because in reality, she's been trying to do that same fidelity chest that we saw William do. And I'm curious how long they thought of that ahead of time, and whether or not this is just something they threw together while writing season two. But of course, I'm reminded of the fact that Bernard earlier, it was two episodes ago, maybe three, when he said, I'm not really here. My memories are playing tricks on me. I'm not here with you now. So, who knows what's going on with him, especially now that he's been dumped into the core. And I really thought those blanks were going to play a bigger role, but they haven't yet. I do wonder, though, was there anyone that didn't foresee that, at the end of the day, there had to be an immortal Ford? Because why would Robert Ford go through all this to create immortality for someone else? Alright, so then we have the hunt for Dad, and the whole storyline going on between Teddy and Dolores. And I said that it was kind of a weird happenstance that she's corrupting Teddy by force, where she corrupted William by accident. 
But at the end of the day, I love the way Teddy's reacting to it because he knows he's being manipulated. Well, at the same time, that's actually a pretty good analogy for the man in black as well. He knows it's a game. He knows it's being manipulated. But at the same time, he wants to be in control. All right, so their plan is relatively simple. They loaded up the train with a whole bunch of explosives and let it go boom, boom into the main control center. And then they're taking off. Now, whether they're leaving or going to assault there, I'm not sure. I get the feeling we're going to see a lot more assault than retreat in the next couple of episodes, especially after the scenes from next time. But we have a whole other story to talk about. Maybe the main story. So, William here thinks for a little bit that this was Ford screwing with him and that his daughter might be a host. And you know what? I can't even say for 100% sure that she's not. How screwy is that? We've now gotten to the point where the fidelity of the copies are so good that I can't even say for sure who's wearing a mask and who's not. Who's real and who's fake. Hell, is William even real? Am I real? I think I'm real. Oh god, I only think I'm real. What, what if I'm not real? Sorry, existential crisis is aside. William and his daughter have an interesting conversation where she says, this world is a world without consequences. That's a great place for a child. But I can't believe you're so pathetic you're still here. You still care about it. And partially as someone who really likes Disney World, I feel like that was a shot at me. But then again, when I choose to never grow up, I guess that uh, I'm not exactly hurting anyone. Where the people in Westworld are enjoying the evil that comes from being without witness. And she was, too, to a certain extent for a certain period of time. But I'm expecting Sir Anthony Hopkins to return in the next couple of weeks and play one hell of a Robert Ford. What about you? And what did you think of tonight's events? Did you foresee them coming? And what do you think about my analogy to Terminator? And there is no fate for what we make. Let me know down in the comment section. Also, if you can figure out when each thing is happening and... If anything is connected or not connected, let me know, or if there's any tricks. And of course, if you haven't already, like and share this video, and of course, click that subscribe button to join our little community here, where I explore how and why we tell stories, and whether or not you want to or not, depends on how deep you're willing to go down the rabbit hole that is, consequences for your actions, and why we tell these stories. I hope you have a good night.